That is perfect winter weather for me. Light clouds, sunshine behind it, diffused light. Perfect. We're getting ah, 11.6. Just before that, it was almost 20. So over 1000 watts from solar. Welcome back to the off grid garage. All right, so it has now been two days since I balanced the battery at 3.6 volts with only one or two millivolt deviation. And yesterday I was at work. We had similar weather yesterday. At noon time, when the sun was on both sides of the roof here, I could see a peak of almost 1500 watts coming from the solar. And the battery was already fully charged. It was already at 99.5%. And I was a bit concerned. And I thought about turning off the solar charger. And I said, nah, ah. it. leave it running and see what happens if the BMS trips out or not. If the BMS trips, I can then see the voltage going up and down all the time when the relay opens and closes again. But it wasn't the case, so it behaved well. It went up to 3.45 volts and started floating afterwards. Everything was fine. Oh, sun is coming out. 14.1 amps we are getting. 100%. All the cells are over 3.4 volts. Deviation is 16 millivolt there. So this all looks good. So at the moment I have both charge controllers set to the conservative settings of uh, 3.45 and 3.35 for floating. And well, we are waiting for 55.2 to be hit and then we go down to a floating voltage. And this should just work nicely now after the balancing all right and all of a sudden we have hit 55.3 charge controllers have turned into absorption mode so we keep this for 10 minutes and if we go into the smart shunt we should see the smart shunt being reset just now yep zero seconds it has just now reset and you can see we already have a deviation of 25 millivolt again at this lower voltage now so after two days of perfectly top balancing the pack to one or two millivolts only at, at 3.6 volts, we can already see a deviation again. So the cells start drifting again. Okay, I have now increased the charge voltage again in the solar charge controller to 57.6 battery voltage, which is uh, 3.6 per cell. Just want to see what it does when we charge higher. Just change the balance setting to 3.6 as well. Just for testing purposes. And we now have already reached 57.6 volts. Deviation 40 millivolt. So it has drifted again. That is insane, right? It was perfectly matched two days ago. But then we discharge to 90% recharge still, it is unbalanced again. 3.625 and number 6 is still the lowest under 3.6. We're still charging with 3.2 amps and the solar charge controllers are in absorption mode at the moment. It will potentially balance out again, I think. It's coming down. Okay, let's give it half an hour in these settings and see if the cells are actually balancing if the BMS can handle it <laughs> look at these little guys they're always watching me here when I make videos it's so funny so after roughly half an hour we can now see the battery pack has balanced and only a few cells are still being balanced at the moment and deviation is uh, 13 millivolt only so that's good so this would actually work now at 3.6 volts before i really don't want to charge the battery every day to 3.6 volts if i hit the 100 percent so the next test would be to charge the battery to 3.45 and absorb Leave it there for an hour or so and set the balance voltage, the kick-in voltage, to the same voltage. 
So charging to 3.45 volts and absorbing at 3.45 volts for an hour. And then we drop it to the floating voltage and see if this works. Maybe it's still not high enough. I don't know. So I discharged the battery now a little bit under the float voltage. So the charge controllers kicked into another bulk and we are now absorbing at 55.2 volts. So the solar chargers only deliver the energy which is needed here to operate all the devices which are running at the moment. But there's nothing going into the battery anymore. You can see here 0 0.7 amps. Shh. And it's now absorbing. I changed the absorb settings to one hour on this voltage now. And also the balancing is kicking in at 3.451, like this one here. And again, we can see we've got 22 millivolt of deviation and we leave this running for an hour now and see what the actual difference is, if it actually balanced the cells now at 3.45 volts. Or if I still need to go higher than this. So after an hour absorbing at 55.2 volts, we have now balanced the pack so far, so 10 millivolt deviation at 3.45. So I guess I will leave the settings as they are and we do another test tomorrow. So we discharge the battery now to say 85% and then recharge again tomorrow and see if we can repeat this result again. I would be totally happy with this result. The next day. I really, 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 really wanted to test if the balancing at 3.45 volts now works. We had 99% state of charge, but there's not enough solar today. It is so cloudy and rainy. It's at 200 watts, 1.7 amps coming in. I don't think we will make it up to 100. The actual battery voltage hasn't risen for, well, one and a half hours, I would say. And now it's actually going down. So I don't think we will make it all right, we try again tomorrow. The next day. Oh, there's a little exclamation mark. An update available for the smart chant. How good is that? I mean, really, how good is this software to give you over the air updates? Victron is really the Tesla under all these solar devices you can buy. That is amazing. Super bright sky, optimal, optimal conditions in winter time here <laughs> for me. So we are charging with 18.4 amps at the moment in these cloudy conditions. Well, we are only a couple of ampere hours away from 100% and I'm already checking the BMS, but we just reached the 3.4 volts with all the cells, almost uh, 12. Millivolt deviation only at the moment. Yeah, guys, so <laughs> I was going to say welcome back to another episode, but it's the same episode as four, four days ago. We only had bad weather here, really, really bad. Thick clouds, rain and drizzle, not good for solar power. And the battery was always around 85, 90, 95, 98, but it never reached the 100. But today, it is only one o'clock, I think. Yeah, quarter past one. It looks very promising. We can actually reach the 100% and can see what kind of balancing we now have. Okay, so at the moment I have set 55.2 in both solar charge controllers. This is the maximum voltage we are charging to. If all cells are balanced, this would mean 3.45 per cell. Then as per your recommendations, under my last couple of videos, I have set the absorption time to 30 minutes. So I'm staying there for 30 minutes. Only because I need to give the smart shunt time to resync, to recalibrate. So it basically resets itself to 100%. It recognizes the battery is fully charged. It sets the state of charge, the SOC to 100% and then goes from there again. Otherwise I wouldn't absorb at all. So 30 minutes and then we drop the voltage to 53.6.
in both solar charge controllers, which is 3.35 floating voltage. And the balancing occurs at 3.451. You can hardly read this. I'm balancing here at the top only, not at 3.35 volts anymore because this has failed. If you haven't watched my last videos, my last couple of videos, well, I tried to balance as low as possible, but with lithium iron phosphate, this is just not possible. We are in the flatter area of the curve already and balancing is not working anymore. So I'm trying this method now. I give the battery only half an hour time to balance and let's see how this works. So as per the calculation here, we are missing only two ampere hours. So we should be very close to 100% now. And you can see the spread. It's actually getting wider or larger the higher we charge now. 54.4 volts we have and 17 millivolt. So it is increasing. Thank you also for your many, many suggestions in regards to cell number 14, which peaked the last time and shut off our system then. Well, it is actually not cell related. It is not a single cell which is peaking out here. You can see here now cell number 14 is under 3.4. So it is not the highest at all. There are many cells which are actually higher now. Number one, for example. Number 11. Number 11 was one of the lowest the last time. So in my pack, it is not a single cell which is peaking out. It is always a different one, which is actually good. It tells you the pack is actually relatively well balanced and uniform and the cells are quite well matched uh, there are big clouds coming 3.1 amps we are charging only with damn it but um well voltage have risen just recently to 54.5 and we could see a deviation here 25 millivolts and now number one is peaking out and number five is the lowest one again. Uh, we are on 999. Come on, you can do it. 7.4 amps. Just a tiny bit more. The smart chant has already reset zero seconds ago. It has counted the ampere hours missing in the battery and was um, getting to zero. And then it resets to 100% again. So we cannot see actually if it works or not. But uh, usually the ampere hour calculations or the column count is fairly accurate in the smart chunt. And even after weeks, it's only off by one, two or three ampere hours all in total. Uh, still waiting for the BMS here. So now at 54.7, we have uh, 29 millivolt deviation. Charging with 4.9. Yep, confirmed. Hey, I cannot believe this. We are down to 1.8 amps of charging current. Are you sh me or what? We cannot reach the 100%. We cannot reach the 55 volts. That's insane. It was on like 20 amps just half an hour ago and now it's so cloudy outside. <sighs> this winter weather. I'm trying to get there for the last four days and I cannot do it. 2.1, we're going up again. This way around. So I have now started the screen recording because we are getting close. We are at 54.8 volts, but the current is still under four amps. Ah, it, it this takes forever. Deviation 33 millivolt. But it doesn't look too bad, actually. Well, it's only four days ago since we fully charged the last time. And we already can see such a high deviation. A drift. I was really hoping for 15, 20 amps going into the battery. So smashing all the power into the battery and then see what the BMS does and the single cells. We're at 55. BMS claims uh, 54.92 over here, so yeah, 35 millivolt, 36, 37, now it's increasing. See, number one is climbing fast, number one and 15 are balancing now. They are over 451. 
which should be our common, yeah, 3.45 is our cell voltage if all the cells would be balanced. Ah, there are more cells coming now. And let's see what number five does actually. If it's, is it catching up? It is increasing in voltage, which is good. 5.5 amps we are charging with. Man, this is better than every movie, right? Okay, we hit 55.245. Well, we can have a look here in the charge controller. State absorption. So it is already in absorption state. So we are now keeping the voltage constant at 55.2 and the current should taper off now quickly because the cells are already saturated. They're already soaked. So let's see what our cell difference does up there. 44, 45 and if cell number 5 is still catching up because the charging current now goes really down to 1.6. So we are also not recharging number 5 now. Okay, the deviation is down to 41. 40 now I can see so that's already five millivolts down Okay, I would say let's keep this one running for the next 20 25 minutes the absorption time is half an hour and Then we talk again Let the screen recording running here on the mobile phone and do a little time-lapse until I'm back Okay, so now after, I don't know, what was it, 25 minutes or so, we are still absorbing at 55.2 volts and, well, 13, 11, 12 millivolt now deviation. That's pretty good. So it came actually down from 45 millivolt to now around 10, say, and they're all balancing apart from number six. Ah, there's always one. Okay, so this seems to have worked now. At least after four days, we could rebalance the whole pack down to 10, 12 millivolts. So balancing at 3.45 volts seems to work just fine. 3.35 volt is a bit low. This doesn't work, but 0.1 volt higher and it works. Okay, I would say I keep these settings now for a while and monitor the situation and see how we go. I think the drift will be a little bit more uh, once we once we discharge a bit lower. It all depends on the weather situation if I fully charge the battery or not, but I usually use the energy. If the battery gets about 90-95%, I start using the energy here. I use the electric chainsaw or the garden shredder or charge the Tesla from it or something just to get rid of the energy. I usually don't wait until the battery is full. Maybe I should do this from time to time just to keep it in balance. Well, I need to learn what's working and what's not. All right, guys, so far this video about <laughs> four or five days now, but I think I've got some sustainable settings now. So we just have to wait and see how this plays out over time. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Stay charged, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. See you then. Bye bye. percent of the battery.